but with that, let's turn to uh, another theme I think that has come up repeatedly in the session so far, and that is the theme of equity. And in particular, how equity actually gets figured uh, in terms of the operationalization of, of the carbon budget uh, becomes obviously a central question, as uh, Jai Raman started out uh, by saying. Uh, so with that, let me turn to Tejal to talk us through around the question of equity in, in mitigation scenarios and pathways. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, uh, I think there is a whole a lot of uh, material to cover. So I just uh, jump right uh, into it. I hope my slides are visible. Yes. So I will be talking about model scenarios and pathways. Uh, this is really uh, an important aspect of uh, the assessment throughout the three working group reports. Uh, working group one, for example, uh, looks at five illustrative scenarios, uh, the high and very high GHG emissions, uh, intermediate GHG emissions, and very low and low GHG emissions. The, what working group one does is look at climate responses under these five illustrative scenarios. So you have uh, these come from a range of uh, what are known as shared socioeconomic pathways. This is a modeling exercise uh, that is undertaken uh, and scenarios are called for, in fact, by the IPCC. So working group one, if you look at box SPM one in the working group one, uh, describes in detail what these scenarios are. Um, and the task of working group one is to look at the climate responses to these scenarios. Working group two assesses the climate risks under uh, different future projections. And uh, these future projections, again, are driven by illustrative RCPs. These are representative concentration pathways and SSPs, shared socioeconomic pathways. Together, uh, they provide uh, some form of uh, uh, projections for the future in terms of the emissions and uh, working group two assesses risks under these different emission scenarios. Working group three uh, uh, is actually about the details. And here is where uh, across these working groups, in fact, a lot of the contestation lies in terms of uh, what are the assumptions that go into these scenarios that have been used in the IPCC. AR6 across the three reports. Uh, working group three deals with a larger set of scenarios. Uh, there are different categories that uh, if you look at, again, box SPM in working group three, uh, it goes from C1 to C8. Uh, there are eight categories of scenarios. The first four categories are where uh, the policy relevant uh, temperature targets are unsupported. So this is the 1.5 degree Celsius and the 2 degree Celsius targets uh, really are uh, represented by the scenario categories C1 to C4. Uh, whereas you have a whole lot of uh, other uh, higher temperature targets in the other categories. And most, if you look at the SPM, most of the results focus uh, on these categories of scenarios. One of the major issues of contestation was how these scenarios are to be represented in the future. Because this, these scenarios do not represent a comprehensive set of scenarios that would consider all possible aspects of how mitigation outcomes or emissions outcomes would be realized in the future. We are talking about future projections here, and so therefore these projections have to be based on a range of assumptions. So working group one, for example, speaks about uh, how these emissions vary between scenarios depending on these assumptions and how alternate assumptions may result in similar emissions and climate responses. Uh, working group one, however, does not go into the assumptions and feasibility or likelihood of individual scenarios. And the fact that these assumptions can be significantly contested and these assumptions can be also very inequitable. And I will talk about this briefly uh, uh, shortly. Uh, was a major uh, subject of discussion. There was a lot of back and forth uh, on this. And this last line that you see here, that the IPCC is neutral with regard to the assumptions underlying the SSPs, which do not cover all possible scenarios. Alternative scenarios may be considered or developed is something that was a result of that discussion in the IPCC uh, approval sessions. And this uh, sort of uh, forms, uh, this is very much a part of uh, all three working groups. This uh, statement, in fact, appears. Uh, 
Now, the question is that if there is a gap in terms of the kind of scenarios that have been developed, you have a range of scenarios which are largely based on uh, least cost assumptions. So you look at where it is cheapest to mitigate and you would mitigate them, not based on uh, assumptions of equity, for example, or uh, uh, you know what would assumptions of equity uh, uh, mean? And how do you operationalize this? So, so these scenarios do not consider this. And this really becomes quite evident in working group three. This just this, these are uh, again statements from the SPM. There's a much more detailed discussion in chapter one, for example, of the uh, of the uh, of the chap of the working group three report. So this talks about how emissions pathways and scenarios are neither predictions nor forecasts. This somehow gets lost in the way in which some of the results of the SPM are uh, are picked up and uh, you know commented on or are uh, popularized in the media. So you talk about so much coal reduction is required, or we are uh, you know rapidly closing window, uh, so much loss, so much species loss, without talking about what kind of temperature targets uh, this would refer. Another trend in doing this is to compare only the lowest possible temperature target with the highest possible temperature target, you know, something like RCP 8.5, the highest emission scenarios, where which are uh, given the fact that the world is trying um, uh, inadequately so, but nevertheless trying to limit uh, global warming and has agreed to do this under the Paris Agreement. Uh, and the those kinds of very high emission scenarios are themselves unlikely, but this comparison therefore gives a kind of, uh, uh, you know, there is a sense of urgency uh, which is tried, to, which which it's supposed to stir up, but unfortunately, um, in in my opinion, it doesn't make for very rigorous science. Uh, sort of just drawing this conclusions, uh, and one of the major issues here is really that. Most of these scenarios that are used in the IPCC report, and this is working group three, do not make ex explicit assumptions about global equity, environmental justice, or intra regional income distribution. In fact, they con contain regionally differentiated assumptions and outcomes. And so, therefore, when we use these scenarios to talk about how these are global scenarios, IPCC, the SPM, for example, gives only the global scenarios. Um, uh, they don't don't talk about what the regional implications are. Although in the chapters there is some discussion on this. Nevertheless, there are uh, issues here when equity is, is not considered. And some of this I am uh, sort of just highlighting here. Some of these are examples of scenarios. Uh, the scenario database is now has now been made public, uh, and the global scenarios basically are results of aggregated regional scenarios. And uh, so these are six regions, for example. And this is consumption, the assumptions and the outcomes of consumption per capita per year in one of the scenarios. I mean, you know, just cherry picking one scenario is not correct. I'm just giving this as an illustration. One scenario, and you see that the line at the top is basically OECD plus EU. And the consumption there keeps on rising from 2020 to 2100, whereas the rest of the world basically uh, is at very low levels of consumption. And the gap between the developed world and the developing world, in fact, increases. This is uh, an input to uh, one of the C1 category scenarios. So C1 is the 1.5 degrees Celsius, 50% probability with limited or no overshoot. And you, if you see, this is not just one scenario. I mean, I didn't want to cherry pick just one scenario because this is again uh, an issue. We should one should not do this, just as one should not provide just median values. And I will get to that shortly. Uh, a range of scenarios have similar assumptions that perpetuate the gap in consumption of resources, of uh, in, uh, the in inequality of incomes, of energy use across uh, the century between regions. Just one example again of one uh, such scenario in terms of what it what the outcomes mean for emissions. This uh, 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 first trajectory is for North America. Zero. Uh, by somewhere around 2050. This is again C1 category, 1.5 degrees Celsius. Europe, which re reaches net zero, in fact, just before 2100, somewhere around 2090. And this is India, which re reaches net zero emissions, in fact, much before. And these are not even per capita emissions. These are annual CO2 emissions. They continue to remain below the developed countries. 
uh, start producing much, much sooner. They don't increase, in fact, very rapidly. And the uh, other regions, so this is uh, this is China plus, so there are a few other countries in, uh, included here. And the only other regions that do worse than India here are basically Africa and Latin America. So you, what you have here basically is and we will talk about this, there is an assumption of con in continued use of natural gas and oil, which is supposed to be phased out much, much slower in most of these scenarios as compared to coal. Now, gas and oil are also fossil fuels. They do lead to CO2 emissions. But a lot of the in these scenarios, these CO2 emissions are counterbalanced by negative emissions, largely coming, so carbon dioxide removal, basically, largely happening in the Afolu sector, the agriculture and forestry sector, and in regions which in fact have larger resources uh, uh, of agriculture and forests. So this is in some sense, the uh, what is the background of some of these scenarios. And so the discussions on the fact that this, this should be qualified, there should be qualifications on the use of these scenarios, how they must be interpreted, how they must be used in the SPM itself to avoid uh, confusion and to avoid giving a message that this is somehow either, you know, the, the best possible future that we are looking at, the only possible future that we are looking at, or in even a feasible future that we are considering when we talk about scenarios. And these are the scenario categories. If you see that two degrees Celsius have much a higher number of scenarios, this is from the table SPM1, page SPM24. Um, if you see the C1 category, which is 1.5 with no or limited overshoot, there are huge emissions, 60% as compared to 2019 by 2030 itself, whereas some of the other scenarios were a little slower. Uh, 2050, of course, all of the scenarios have significant emissions. Uh, these are the total cumulative emissions because this is, as Jaraman said, really the important result. Uh, and the, I, the Working Group 3 report says quite clearly that these budgets are similar to those uh, that are spoken of in the Working Group 1 report. But what is important here, and I will focus on the last column, is basically the amount of cumulative net negative emissions. If you see the amount of negative emissions required for these scenarios are huge, and these are this is these are the uh, net negative emissions only after CO2 the so after net zero is reached, but you need net you need negative emissions in regions even before the point of net zero to counterbalance basically continued emissions from oil and gas use a large majority of which are in the developed countries. So the contestations around the issue of the use of scenarios the the fact that these drive the entire narrative in the IPCC reports uh, really comes from uh, the understanding that these scenarios are inequitable. Their assumptions ensure that, in fact, inequity is perpetuated into the future. So if we have a 1.5 degree Celsius world, I'm sure uh, uh, none of us would want an inequitable 1.5 degree Celsius world. We would want an equitable one. And so therefore, this be these become an in, uh, important issue. I'll just, uh, just uh, a last uh, point that uh, I wanted to make. One of the is other issues of contention was also how uh, these uh, results are in, uh, interpreted, what kind of ranges are given. Uh, so if you must have seen a lot of you in the media, this focus on, uh, you know, 95% of uh, reduction in coal is required. Now, this is a median value uh, based on the assessed scenario, uh, 95, uh, you know, 5 to 95 percentile, so 90% of the scenarios that were assessed. Now, these do not include all scenarios. This, these scenarios do not include equity. There are highly problematic, regionally differentiated assumptions in a lot of these scenarios. And so, therefore, to then pick out one number and uh, sort of provide this without qualification is a problem. And so, therefore, some of the discussion in the uh, approval sessions was really were really also about uh, the fact yeah. that there should be ranges that would be that should be uh, provided, and the final SPM in fact does provide ranges. So, if you look at ninety five percent, for example, the range that is associated with this it is sixty to hundred uh, percent, and similarly for oil and gas. But if you look at gas, there is a minus thirty there in the range which means that there are scenarios that in fact project an increase in gas into the future, which like I said, is counterbalanced by negative emissions, uh, most likely 
it, we don't know where these negative emissions are, uh, but most likely in the developing world. Similarly, again, species risk, for example, uh, there was discussions around whether there should be a median value of ranges, and, the, and then eventually, of course, uh, the, 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 the ranges are now what are reflected in this period. I want to end by saying that this is a serious concern. The lack of equity in uh, models and model scenarios uh, is a serious concern for developing countries. The absence of these scenarios doesn't mean that they don't exist. The fact that they are not assessed in the IPCC report doesn't mean they don't exist. Some of it, some of them, in fact, are referred to in the underlying literature. They just don't uh, are not uh, reported in quantified terms. Uh, they, it also doesn't mean that these kinds of scenarios are not possible. So this signals a need to fill this gap in the literature and the assessment of the IPCC. These scenarios really drive the narratives. So alarmism as well as oversimplified interpretation must be checked when we look at these scenarios and the results from the IPCC. And lastly, uh, to reiterate the point that Jairaman made, the, the scenarios focus on the future. But they focus on the future as if the past, uh, you know, as if to say that the past did not happen. You are at a, a stage of inequity today, which is going to be perpetuated into the future because uh, that we are already, and this is a se se severely constrained future. And that constraint comes from past emissions. We are already at 1.1 degrees Celsius. So hardly any time for hardly any much more space for 1.5. And so this somehow is forgotten in the entire scenario based model. So let me stop here. Uh, Thanks so much, Tejal. Uh, I think really some uh, very important cautions with regard to scenarios and how they're used. And I would say that extends actually also to the use of integrated assessment models, because a lot of what we see in the IPCC comes really out of uh, out of models, which have obviously their underlying both structural and parametric assumptions. And as some might say, you know, you can make a model produce what you want it to produce based on uh, what assumptions you put into it. And I think the, the best example of that perhaps is the topic we will hear from next, which is the whole issue of uh, negative emissions. Uh, in many ways, negative emissions has been a huge uh, artifice uh, of models to try and make them perform and produce outcomes that are considered to be more acceptable than others. And I think that the warnings that you raised around objective versus normative uh, scenarios is, is very well taken.